All right. So, oftentimes I will talk to you, the atheist, and I will tell you quite clearly, God is real to me. God, I said to one guy, actually Peter, really nice guy, you know, Peter's a, Peter's a decent human being, especially on Twitter. He can be a really fun, charming human being. But I said to him when I was in his little, his little YouTube session, I said, God, I go to my prayer closet, I pray for three, four, five hours. God is as real to me. The Holy Spirit enters my apartment. It's as real to me as the steam in the shower. I meant that. I 100% meant that. Now you say to me, prove it. I don't really think it works like that. Give me evidence. I don't think it works like that. You say to me, the burden of proof is on me. It's not my life. <laughs> I don't owe you an answer. I just told you the truth, according to me. And for you who, who goes, hey, truth is good in you, truth is good in me. It's the only truth I can ever tell you is the truth according to me. Stop that nonsense talking point today. Anybody who says you, I tell you the, the truth about everything is a liar. The only truth I can ever tell anybody is the truth according to me. It's called integrity, period. I don't know what that talking point is that you guys throw out, but it's evil and a lie and stupid. Stop it. Only truth I can ever tell anybody is the truth according to me. So you say, give me evidence. I don't owe you evidence. I don't know you. I don't know you. It is up to you. It is up to you, the listener, you, the atheist, you, the non-believer, to investigate the claim that I am making with honesty and with sincerity and investigate it for real. And as a rule, you do not do that. No, you absolutely 100% do not. No, no, you do not. Seek and ye shall find. That's what I'm saying to you. Seek and you shall find. But you have to seek honestly. Watching the atheist experience is not honestly investigating the claim of Christianity. You are only reinforcing your non-belief. You are watching it for the dumb Christian. This is what you're watching for. The dumb Christian to call up and Matt Dillahunty to pound him into oblivion. And you go, woo! You even applaud. I've heard you guys applaud. You go, woo! He did it. He did it. He beat the Christian. Proving once again that God isn't real. He didn't prove anything. Proved nothing of the sort. He proved that he is smarter than most of the people who call. That's the only thing he proves. He intellectually outmaneuvers his opponents, the Christians, but he has not proved anything. Nothing. That's not honestly investigating the claim of Christianity. That is reinforcing daily your non-belief. Period. That's what happens when you debate a flat earther. You're reinforcing your intellectual superiority, your own sense of your own intelligence. That's it. That's all you're doing. So it's, it's worse than a waste of your time. It's building arrogance inside of you that's getting deeper and bigger by the day. Debate a flat earther. Why would anybody do that? Why would you do that? Why? I don't debate people who, can't, who, who don't read, who can't process basic math. I don't go debate fourth graders. Why would I do that? The only reason somebody would ever debate a flat earther is to reinforce your own sense of intellectual superiority. Good job. You're, the, you're smarter than a flat earther. Whoopie do. That's not very smart. It's honest to God, not very smart. And you aren't really seeking God. You aren't really looking for evidence. You aren't really trying to find out the truth. You're trying to reinforce your lack of belief. That's not honest investigation. It's really honest to God not. There are, there are, there are, as a general rule, there are people on Twitter today, Christians, now, I don't know this for a fact. I'm just going on what I sense, whose faith is extraordinarily important to them. This is one girl, Liz. I don't know this for a fact, but I just get the sense that faith is really, 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 really important to her. That it's really what she, what she says it is, that it's, it's her entire life. She's not, she's not making apologetics. She's not debating atheists. I doubt she can. Why? That's the paradox. It's really, really hard to do. If, it's, if, if faith is real to you, this is the struggle I had in Peter's little YouTube chamber. I'm going to figure out a way to do it, but that's, that's, that's called a talent. As a general rule, if faith is something that's really, really, truly important to you, it's really hard to communicate that to another person. Because it's real to you. You're really impassioned about it. It really means something to you. It's really hard to communicate that. 
There's another one, Pennsylvania Van something or other. I think she was in the army. She writes poems. I don't know for a fact that faith is really important to those two. I just sense that it is. And I don't think they engage in apologetics. Would surprise me if they did. Why? It's hard to do. If it's really, really important to you, if faith is something real to you, it's hard to tell that to somebody. It's easy to come up with, you know, to pass around the talking points that the Christians will come with, well, you know, here's the Kalam cosmological argument. That's, that's easy to do. Because they don't really believe it and neither do you. <laughs> you just, I mean, maybe they do. I don't. I don't think it's a good argument, but that's just me. Whatever. Whatever. You owe it to yourself out of respect for life, out of respect for truth, out of respect for yourself to investigate the claim of Christianity honestly. And you don't do that by getting involved in a, in a debate where you're just trying to outmaneuver someone intellectually. That's not honestly investigating the claim of Christianity, that you're trying to prove it false. That's not a path to truth. It's not. <laughs> I don't know who th why you think it is. If you have any integrity, you realize immediately I just told you the truth because that's a God's honest truth. That's not a path to truth. It's not. It's not. If someone tells me the ocean exists, the ocean exists, it's real, and I've never seen the ocean, I don't immediately start arguing about what I try to find out if they're telling the truth. How do you do that? Here's the one way I can suggest. Okay? Find someone in your hometown. Find someone close to you. Find someone whose faith is real to them. Because this is when I first started to get wise. I was in Italy. I was hanging out with my cousin, who I like a lot. You know, it reminds me a lot of my mom. I was hanging out with my cousin and I was pretty drunk. <laughs> I had been drinking wine, all Italian wine all night, and I was pretty lit. We started having a conversation about Catholicism. She's extremely devout Catholic. But I also thought that she was cool and a normal person. It's got to be someone who's a normal person. Don't find someone who weirds you out because that's not you honestly investigating. Find someone you respect. Find someone you respect and you like who you know is a Christian and it's really important to them. Not somebody who you think is a freak because that's not you honestly investigating. Find someone you respect and you like. I like and respect my I liked her a lot. She's really cool. And it tripped me out that she was a freaking devout Roman Catholic because I was like, how could she be cool and be a devout Roman Catholic at the same time? Those are contrary, one to the other. That's what I thought. That's honestly what you think when you meet a Christian. How could someone be a Christian and cool at the same time? Those are contrary, one to the other. That's why you need to find a cool Christian, someone you respect, someone you like, whose faith is real to them. Now, I did the same thing that you would do. Same thing. I gave her agnostic, you know, fake talking points. She tells me she's a devout Roman Catholic. I said, the first thing I said is you guys all hate gays. It's the first thing I said to her. It's the first thing you would say to a Christian. That's the first thing I said. You guys all, why do you guys all hate gays if God is so good? <laughs> why do you guys all hate gays? Sound exactly like you, huh? Yep. It's the first thing I said to her. She gave me a terrible answer. She said, uh, love the sinner, hate the sin. By the way, Christians, don't use that. <laughs> It doesn't work. It doesn't. It doesn't solve the problem. It makes us look. It makes you look bad. It's not a good answer. It's not a good comeback. Love the sinner, hate the sin. No, it's terrible. It doesn't work. Don't want to go into it now, but suffice it to say, it is a bad response. You know, she could have told me, I don't hate gays at all, with sincerity. It would have been a much better, much better answer. You ask me that, that's what I'll say. I have no animosity towards homosexuals whatsoever. None. None. Don't even care. I. I didn't, people have told me they're gay. I forgot. A lot of times, people have told me they're gay, I forgot, you know, because I don't care. Don't care. I don't have any animosity towards a homosexual whatsoever. It's just my own personal thing. I've known a lot in my life. I've known one or two gay friends. I've had like 500. The actor was in acting classes and went to New York City, West Village, East Village, my whole life. So I've known hundreds of gay people. There's been three or four gay people in every single acting class I've ever taken. There's been, as a rule, six guys in the class. Four of them are gay. So I've known gay people every single, you know, every, for all my life, I've known a lot of homosexuals. So I have no animosity whatsoever. No preconceived notions about them whatsoever. But, irrelevant. 
So I start talking to her and I found out really, I got over it. I got over my talking points and my agenda and I just started listening to her and I found out really quickly, really obvious to me that faith was really, re it was real to her, something real about it. It was so obvious. If I had said otherwise, I would have been lying. So that's how you investigate cleanly, with a clean, clear conscience. You don't watch atheist experience. That's not that's not a real investigation. And you don't go and, and start talking to some Christian who you think is a freak. That's not a real investigation either. You find someone nearby, your job, your your neighbor, someone you know well. It could be a member of your family whose faith is real to them. Whose faith is really real to them. But as a rule, they're probably not in your face. They're probably not preaching to you. Because people whose faith is real to them, like that's why I pointed out those two. I doubt they're doing apologetics. I don't know that, but I doubt it. Uh, Stephanie. Stephanie's a totally different story. It's a different type of person. Stephanie, God bless her. She, she, she's trying. She's trying. She'll get you one day. She'll get you. She, she will. <laughs> um, no, go. Go, Stephanie. Leave her alone. Anyways, that's how you, find, that's how you investigate, really. Go to that person that you respect and ask them why they believe. And listen to the answer. You aren't going to walk away a believer. You aren't going to walk away, hallelujah, God is real. But you're going to understand 100% clearly and cleanly that it is 100% real to them. And you will know that for a fact and you will know why. If you listen. That's really investigating. Everything else is not. It's not. All right, so oftentimes I will talk to you.